All right, welcome back. In this second video, we're going to be looking at the first macromolecule type, carbohydrates. So what comes to mind when you think of carbs or carbohydrates? For me, a lot of it is what's shown in this picture, like bread, pasta. I think of cake. I think of fruit, like apples, pears, grapes, strawberries. And so that's where we find carbohydrates and grains, fruits, vegetables. They give us energy through glucose, a bunch of glucose molecules linked together that we can break down. Carbs are represented by this general formula where the ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen is one to two to one, and we see that here as well. So for example, glucose is C6H12O6. We see that one to two to one ratio. There are three main subtypes of carbs, carbohydrates. Saccharide, or saccharides, that means sugar or sugars. Mono means one, so monosaccharides are a single sugar. Disaccharides, we'll see two, something like two glucose molecules linked together. And polysaccharides mean many sugars linked together. Sometimes, you don't see this as frequently as before, but in between two and three, sometimes you'll see something called an oligo, oligosaccharide. And that means few. Few usually ranges, it usually differs between the different kind of resource you're looking at, but it could be anywhere from three to 20-ish number of carbohydrate monomers linked together. Monosaccharides are our first type, single sugar. They can have a carbon chain length of anywhere from three to seven carbons. And usually these end with O-S-E, like uh, glucose, sucrose, fructose. And this is in contrast to the enzymes we saw in the previous videos that often end in A-S-E, like lactase. We have the sugar lactose. Monosaccharides, you'll see carbonyl groups in them, this polar group. If you have, uh, let's see, something that looks like this, we have our carbonyl group and that central carbon is bound to something with a carbon attached to it, and then a hydrogen on the other side. If you see this, these are aldoses or aldoses. And indicated in green, you're gonna see this in the next slide. In contrast, if this, instead of hydrogen here, if you see a carbon, if you see a carbon, so two carbons that are attached to the central carbon, in that case, these would be ketoses. And then when you look at the carbon chain length, if you have three carbons, we have triosis. If this was five carbons long, this would be a pentosis or pentoses. And then if you have a six chain or a six carbon chain, then we have hexoses. So here's that in green we were looking at in the previous slide. If you look at the carbonyl and what's attached to that central carbon, this makes it an aldose, whereas here, that central carbon of the carbonyl group has a carbon on either side of it, so that's a ketose. So we can classify monosaccharides on the basis of whether they're an aldose or a ketose, but we can also classify them based on their carbon chain length. Um, this is what I saw earlier, three, five, or six, triose, pentose, or a hexose. Here we have three very common hexose monosaccharides shown. So hexose because they're all six carbon chains. And on the left, I see glucose. I see galactose in the middle and fructose on the right. It looks like the two on the left, here's my carbonyl. My two on the left look like these are aldoses. And then on the, on the right, I have a ketose. And these are all structural isomers because they all have the same chemical formula, C6H12O6. So it's, well, it's already typed up in the, on the bottom here. Oops. So these are all structural isomers, different arrangement of the atoms, but they have the same chemical formula. Glucose, it's a very common and important source of energy. Galactose, we're going to see they're part of the disaccharide lactose. Lactose is made of galactose and glucose, and we see this in milk. And then fructose is found in fruits. It's part of the disaccharide sucrose. So sucrose is actually made of fructose plus glucose. For the longer monosaccharides, the ones that are five or six carbon in length, 
These can actually exist in both linear and ring forms. And when they're in aqueous solutions, we usually assume that they're in their ring structure. So this is what their ring structure looks like. I can see this linear form is turning into or converting into a ring structure. If you have, and let me number the carbons for you here. This is carbon number one, this little corner here. Two, three, four, five, and then this is six. If the hydroxyl group is on the bottom or below carbon number one, we call this an alpha sugar. But this is carbon number one again. If the hydroxyl group on carbon number one is above the carbon, then we call this the beta sugar or the beta formation. Another way to tell alpha versus beta is the alpha in the alpha state, the hydroxyl group is opposite on the opposite side of carbon number six. Whereas in the beta formation, it's on the same side as carbon number six over here. We can see that the ribose, ribose molecule down here, which is a five carbon monosaccharide can also form rings. In this case, it's a five, uh, five sided ring. And then we have fructose here on the right. This is a six carbon ring, or excuse me, six carbon monosaccharide that forms a five sided ring. Here we're looking at disaccharides. We're forming a disaccharide. How do we form a disaccharide? We do so by taking two monosaccharides and linking them together through a dehydration reaction. So I see glucose, that's one of my monosaccharides, fructose, another monosaccharide, and I'm going to link them together covalently to form something called a glycosidic bond. So glycosidic bonds are a type of covalent bond. If I look really carefully and I see that this is carbon number one, I see the hydroxyl group is down here, so this is an alpha formation. So this is an alpha glycosidic bond between carbon number one and over here between carbon number one and carbon number two. So this is an alpha one two glycosidic bond here. If the hydroxyl group here in the glucose molecule were actually above the carbon number one, then that would be a beta, beta linkage or beta glycosidic linkage. Here we see three very common types of disaccharides, which I would like you to be familiar with. We have maltose, which is made up of two glucose monomers linked together through that glycosidic bond or glycosidic linkage. We've got lactose, which is made up of galactose plus glucose. And then we have sucrose, sucrose or table sugar, which is made of glucose and fructose, a five-sided ring, so glucose and fructose. And again, maltose is a grain sugar, Lactose is found in milk, and sucrose is our table sugar that you usually see in your kitchen. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes we'll see oligosaccharides, whereas oligo means few, few meaning three to 20-ish monosaccharides linked together, but we don't see that as often anymore, so we're gonna jump straight to polysaccharides, which are many monosaccharides joined together through those glycosidic linkages. Sometimes they're branched, so you'll see branches of monosaccharides. Sometimes they're unbranched, so you see single long chains. And these can be made of all the same kind of monosaccharide, like hundreds or even thousands of glucose molecules linked together, or they can be comprised of different types of monosaccharides. So overall, they can be quite large in their size. Some common examples you'll see throughout our course and future courses are starch, glycogen, and cellulose. All three of these are made up of lots and lots of glucose molecules linked together. But interestingly, they're found in different types of organisms. So starch we find in plants. Plants store glucose in the form of starch that we eat and break down for energy. Plants also can store glucose in the form of cellulose. And this we often refer to as fiber because fiber is mostly cellulose. We can eat fiber, but we can't break it down. For us, we can break down starch and glycogen, and glycogen is how humans and other animals that have a backbone store glucose. Chitin is also a pretty common example, and that one is not made of glucose monomers. That one is made of something called N-acetyl 
beta D glucosamine subunits, and we'll see that in a later slide. So amylose and amylopectin are two types or two forms of starch. Amylose is mostly unbranched glucose, and they're connected by alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages. I can see this is on the opposite side or below carbon number one. And the reason it's called 1,4 is because on the right side, this is carbon number four. Whereas amylopectin is branched. So I can see the branches here, whereas this one earlier was unchanged or un unbranched. And here we see both alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages, but also to form the branch or branches, they have alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkages with carbon number six over here and carbon number one here. And because of the way um, we join these glucose subunits, they have a helical structure throughout. So I can see that here as well as here. Glycogen is not shown here, but it's similar in structure to the second one shown here, amylopectin, because glycogen is also very highly branched. As I mentioned earlier, cellulose is also a polysaccharide, and we see this in plant cell walls. Cellulose is also made of a bunch of glucose molecules linked together, and these are unbranched chains, so that's why they look so linear here, of beta-1,4 glycosidic linkages. Interestingly, each glucose monomer is flipped next a relative to the next one, so they form a really dense fibrous structure. And we'll see, again, we'll see these in cell walls of plants. Um, so you see cellulose is the main component of wood and paper. And we cannot break down beta-1,4 linkages, interestingly. So when we eat cellulose in the form of fiber, we can't break it down. It just comes back out through, you know, when you go to the bathroom. But herbivores like cows, uh, koalas, they can. And the reason they can is because they have special microbes in their stomach that break it down for them. These microbes have an enzyme called cellulase that can break down cellulose into the glucose monomers. Interestingly, termites by themselves cannot break down wood. They actually rely on a microbe inside their gut that has the enzyme cellulase to break down the cellulose or the wood. Shown here is what you would see online if you were to just Google the three very common types of polysaccharides, glycogen, starch, and cellulose, and you can see how branched starch and glycogen are compared to cellulose. And then here's another look where we have starch, very branched, also glycogen, branched as well, made of those alpha linkages, and then cellulose, which is very linear, made of those beta linkages, and we cannot break those down. And the last most common type of polysaccharide we're going to be talking about in our class is chitin. Chitin is found in the exoskeleton of arthropods. Arthropods include things like insects and crustaceans, where the chitin is part of their exoskeleton and protects their inner body parts from the outer environment. Chitin is made of a modified sugar subunit. This is called N-acetyl-beta-D-glucosamine. You don't have to memorize that. But I can see that besides the usual carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen atoms shown here, I also have nitrogen here. We're also going to see that chitin makes up fungal cell walls in the future. Fungi include things like molds and yeast. And that takes us to the end of the second part of chapter three. In the next or third video, we're going to be looking at lipids, which is our second biological macromolecule.